this is a $2,500 camera that will shoot in 10-bit color depth. And the camera I'm shooting on will also take video in 10-bit color. And 10-bit color is one of the big differences between very expensive cameras like these and cameras that cost significantly less. So what's the difference? Do I need 10-bit? I'll give the answer after this five second introduction, scientifically designed to make you like and subscribe. Okay, so the short answer is you don't need 10-bit. You're welcome. But please stick around and I will teach you how to use your 8-bit camera in such a way that you don't actually need 10-bit. And I'll also explain to you why I personally would not buy a camera unless it had 10-bit. I know, it sounds confusing, but I'll straighten it all out. But first, before I do that, I want to convince you that 8-bit is plenty of colors. Let's do that by going back to the beginning of the video. Now here at the beginning of the video, I have switched back between recording in 10-bit and 8-bit color depth. And I am willing to bet you a like and subscribe that you can't tell the difference. And I am so confident in this that I should probably put some money behind it because I know you can't tell the difference because when everything is uploaded to YouTube, YouTube converts everything to 8-bit video. So you couldn't tell unless you had my original files. And even if you had my original files, you'd be watching them on your monitor. And your monitor is most likely an 8-bit monitor. Certainly my monitor is an 8-bit monitor. So I wouldn't be able to tell. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a 10-bit monitor. And I'm not sure if I would be able to recognize a 10-bit monitor if I even saw one. 8 bits is a lot of color information, and it's plenty for pretty much everything you do. Now that said, why would anybody in their right mind need to shoot in 10-bit video? So video nowadays is digital, and all that means is that for every color, there is a number assigned to that color, and there is a color space. And so let's just say that this is all the color, this is a color wheel. And in there, it has to divide it up and basically say, look, if it's, you know, let's do a little grid here. And if the you know, colors are in this section right here, then it's going to be this color, this color, this color, this color, this color, this color. And it's going to put it in there. And of course, the more defined of an area it is, the better color reproduction we can have. This is why early video games only did 256 colors, is because it was a limited palette for which it could then take and process and put up on the video screen. Confusingly, we refer to that as 8-bit, but the 8-bit we're talking about here for video cameras is not the same 8-bit. It is based on 256 colors, however, but there are three different colors of 256. There's 256 for red, green, and blue. And therefore, a color, as we talk about it in video, is actually 256 times 256 times 256, which turns out to be over 16 million colors. In other words, there are 16 million places or divisions of colors so that when the camera sensors see something, it can place it in a color container or assign it a number in this color space. Now, what is 10-bit color, you might ask? Well, 10-bit is just a further resolution dividing those colors up. So if we zoom in on one area, we would find that in the 8-bit world, we would have Mm, uh, some containers here for our colors. It would be sort of like this, and then if a color comes in, let's say the color is here, then it would put it in that square, and then that would be the color that it would give it and assign it a number to, and then when we play it back, it would play that color back at that time uh, as we play it back. And then another one might come in here, but that would be considered to be the same color because it's close enough in the 8-bit world. Well, in 10-bit, basically, we have further resolutions of everything. In fact, we don't just have twice as much. We have actually 60 times as many more places for color information. And so, as we divide this up further and further, when we go to 10-bit, these two that used to be the same color can now have a differentiation between them. Now, are you going to see that differentiation? Probably not at this point, but there's a reason, and we'll get to in a minute, why we would shoot in 10-bit and we would want to know the difference between those tiny little differences in the color spectrum.
So here's the real problem. As we push and pull the color information around, we risk separating colors too far apart from each other for which there's no gradations between those colors. If we shoot in 10-bit, as we pull something apart, there's information that can be gleaned, that can be in there, and it's in the image, and that's what allows it not to, what they say, break apart in the image. And that's why people shoot in 10-bit. It's not because 10-bit is better, because if you're shooting in camera and you don't adjust it much, it's going to look about the same. I showed that at the beginning of this video. Those videos that were shot in 8-bit and 10-bit looked identical because I didn't do too much to them. But if I were to really stretch them and pull them apart, then you would begin to see that the color information wasn't there and that it couldn't then do it. It would basically, as you pull them apart, break. Whereas in 10-bit, as you pull it apart, there's information that fills it in so that you have enough information for that 8-bit color. So there's your answer. If you're shooting in a camera that can only do 8-bit video, then you want to shoot as close to the end product as possible. You don't want to shoot in some sort of log profile or something that stretches or pulls the information all the way down into the center and then has to pull it back out in order for it to be delivered. And that's essentially what a log format is. I'm now shooting in S-Log3 and it looks like this. It's kind of milky because there are no really black blacks or white whites. It's taken the darks and the whites and kind of scrunched them into the center so that it can make room to catch more variations in the darks and in the highlights. And you can see that in Final Cut Pro on the parade, that all of the information, especially in the luma values from the brightest brights to the darkest darks, are kind of scrunched up in the middle. And then as I color correct them here, I pull down the color colors uh, into the shadows and I pull up the highlights and it corrects the image and then maybe I'll put some additional saturation in there as well and so you can see that that's actually stretching or pulling the image back out okay so here's a crude demonstration I've set up this scene and I've shot it in S log 3 in both 8-bit and 10-bit color off my a7s3 I then color graded the crap out of it so that you could see the difference. Here it is in 8-bit, stretched out and mangled in post. And you can see in the background that there's a lot of noise here. And that noise appears because I've broken the image by stretching it too far. There isn't enough color information in the background in this area here. Now I'm going to show you the same clip with the exact same color grading applied in 10-bit. There you go. That's the difference between 8-bit and 10-bit. Here it is again. 8-bit, 10-bit. 8-bit, guess what this one is? You're right, it's 10-bit. Now in color grading, you may not need the 10-bit information is there, but when you need it, you need it. So why would your camera company do that? Why would they put S-Log3 in an 8-bit camera when it can't actually do S-Log3 very well? Well, the answer is it's a feature that they can add because they can shoot in that log profile without a lot of processing. But in order to do 8-bit versus 10-bit, that actually does require a lot of processing. So a camera that doesn't have a very fast processor in it can't really give you 10-bit, but hey, we can give you S-Log because, well, you want it and you think you need it. And I will admit that sometimes on my A7S II, for example, that was 8-bit, but could shoot in S-Log3, sometimes when I would shoot, it would work out okay. Because when the dynamic range in your scene is pretty wide, when you go to stretch it back out, you don't have to stretch it that far. But if the dynamic range in your scene is kind of limited, then you've really scrunched it down, and now you've got to pull it back way far, and it starts to fall apart. And I, on many occasions with that camera, would come home after shooting something, trying to get it to look good again, and only to hang my head and say, I must be the worst cinematographer that ever lived. And that's a horrible feeling. And I don't want that feeling to happen to you. So if you have an 8-bit camera, my advice is stay away from S-Log. Now, sometimes I would come home and it would look good. And I would be very happy with it. And again, it's kind of hit or miss. 
but this is the reason that I personally would never buy a camera that wasn't 10-bit. Well, that's my experience. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. If you agree with me, let me know in the comments. If you don't care, just move on. That's fine. You don't, <laughs> we don't have to be friends. It'll be fine. I'm just looking for my people. And if you're one of my people, let me know, because I'm planning a video called Why My Videos Sucked. If you can relate, like and subscribe.